Are you thinking about working with a coach? Or maybe you've started the coaching process already. I'm Dr. Richard McKinnon. I'm a workplace psychologist. And in this video, I'm going to outline some of the most important principles to bear in mind so that you can extract the maximum value from your coaching experience. On this channel, I share insights from the science of psychology to help you be your best self at work. So let's make a start. At its very heart, coaching represents an investment. It's an investment of your time, your effort, and of course, it's a financial investment. And so I want all of my coachees to extract the maximum return for that investment. And of course, the last thing I want as a coaching psychologist is to get to the end of a program and realize that the coachee is very disappointed with what's happened. And I'm sure that if you're working with a coach, that's something that you want to avoid too. So I'd like to share with you some of the key principles to bear in mind so that you can maximize the impact of the coaching, regardless of the coach you're working with and really regardless of the topic you're working on. My number one piece of advice on this is to treat your coaching program like a project. If you had a project at work, what you would have were, would be some deadlines. You would have a goal to work towards. You would have time in your schedule blocked out to work on that project. And you would have some very actionable tasks on your to-do list so that you could make progress on that project. Well, I would argue coaching is exactly the same. You need to have clarity on where you're going to get to. Change isn't going to happen magically, so you need to put the time in and the effort in in an intentional way. So just like a project, you need to be clear on where you want to get to. You really need to block out time to work on it. And you need to be quite specific about how you're going to do that. So those steps, those tasks, that time and that clarity of direction, just like any formalized work project, are what are gonna help you extract more benefit from the coaching process. Now, if you view coaching as a program, then it's not a series of conversations. And that's really important because if you view your coaching as a series of conversations, you might pay loads of attention for that conversation. And then your focus on coaching poof, dies a death until the next conversation. And there might be a little bit of embarrassment that you've not made much progress, but now you've got my attention and now I'm really focused on the coaching process. And then we end the conversation and you go poof, back to life as normal and all of the different things that are demanding your attention and your time. If you view it, as an ongoing program of activity, then your focus, your involvement in coaching is an ongoing area of focus. How you think about coaching makes a real difference. This is a program you're part of, not a series of meetings that you need to pay attention to. Another thing is to make sure that you actually maintain that focus in an actionable way. You're actually doing what you said you would do, whether it's reading an article or having a conversation or practicing some new skills. That's where the magic of coaching happens. Ideally, not when you're talking to your coach. So follow through on those commitments that you've made to the coach because they are a good idea. This is the core of coaching, behavior change. The only way it's gonna change is if you practice. Take time, ideally it's in your schedule, but take time to reflect. How is it going for you? What are you noticing about this process? Are you noticing about yourself? What are you noticing about your noticing and observation? What is becoming clearer to you? How do your experiments and behavior have an impact on you and those around you? Reflect on this. Don't walk through it in automatic pilot. Reflect and keep some notes. Really, maintaining a development journal through, through a coaching process is, is a no-brainer. <laughs> Having a log of this that you can look back on, your lessons learned, your emotions, your thoughts about your thoughts, is an excellent resource because our memories don't work the way a computer does and it won't be as exact as when you look back on your notes. It will be colored by all kinds of things. So have those notes, refer to them, and of course, bring them to your coaching conversation so you can be very specific about what you thought or felt or did. Anyone who knows me knows that there are certain words in my vocabulary that I use a lot when it comes to coaching. And one of these is discomfort embrace the discomfort that comes with making changes. Because if we go the opposite direction from what's new and uncomfortable, well, we're not going to change. We'll stay with what's safe and comfortable, but also we'll avoid the growth that comes with change. 
What form could that take? There are countless ways that discomfort can show up inside. Fear of failure, fear of being judged, um, fear of missing out because we're doing something new and we're not doing something we used to do. It might be embarrassment or anticipated embarrassment. Countless ways our mind can give us discomfort. But if we can see it for what it is, a temporary unpleasant experience, and we have clarity on where we're going, our goal, then we're able to persist through it. It doesn't mean it's nice. In no way am I suggesting that embracing the discomfort is going to be fun, but it's meaningful, it's purposeful, and it helps us get to where we want to go. So don't see coaching as an easy, enjoyable activity. It can give you real sense of purpose and a real sense of achievement. But along the way, there will be discomfort because you'll be trying new things. Embrace that, see it as part of the process. Now, if you want to know more about our approach to coaching, you can either visit the coaching playlist on this channel, or you can go and visit the website at worklifepsych.com coaching to find out all about how we coach individuals at all levels. And of course, we've got several episodes of the podcast, My Pocket Psych, dedicated to the coaching experience. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.